So here we have a set of step ladders with two legs, a longer leg, 150 centimetres, and a shorter leg, 147 centimetres. Um, we're asked to find the angle, that's this angle here, that the shorter leg makes with the ground. That's the ground here. Now, looking at this question, not right angled triangle, so we're either sine rule or cosine rule, and you'll notice that there's a side and the opposite angle given, another side, opposite angle we're trying to find. So as sure as fate, if you've got sides and the opposite angles, and indeed one side, the ground side and the opposite angle that we want nothing to do with, we're not trying to find this ground side or the, the opposite angle up here. So as sure as fate, if you've got a side and opposite angle, side, opposite angle, you'll be using the sine rule, which were given uh, in the exam. There it is, sine rule A over sine A equals B over sine B, C over sine C. Little a, big A, little b, big b, little c, big c. We have to translate that into this, these numbers in the triangle. So let's call this side, this angle A, and this B, and this C. So this vertex is A, this vertex is B, this is a triangle A, B, C. And the side opposite angle A is little a. And the side opposite angle B is little b. And the side opposite angle C is little c. And we go up to this and say, well, what on earth do we know? We know little a, it's 140. We know angle a, 66. So we know this. We know little b, side b. And we're trying to find out uh, angle b. We've got nothing to do, as we said, with the ground side, that side c and angle c. So let's use the sine rule and here's the part we'll use. A over sine A is equal to B over sine B. So that means little a, 140, angle A, 66 degrees, so sine 66, little b, 150, and angle b, x degrees. So that's sine x degrees. So that's what we're going to use. Now, dividing by sine x is not much use. Sine x is way out of use, way down at the bottom of a fraction. So let's multiply both sides of this fraction by sine x. So we'll get sine x times 140 over sine 66. So that sine x will appear in the top of the fraction there. And sine x times 150 over sine x, the sine x's will just cancel and we'll be left with 150. And then we'll need to do the same with a divide by sine 66. So we're left with sine x times 140 multiply by sine 66 both sides that'll disappear on the left cancels with that and we've got 150 times sine 66 on the right finally divide both sides by 140 so sine x equals 150 times sine 66 divided by 140. there are other ways you probably think this is a slightly slow way of doing it, but it's nice to see what we do to both sides of the equation as we go. Multiply both sides by sine x, multiply both sides by sine 66, divide both sides by 140. Another way of doing it that you may well have been taught is you invert both, si uh, both fractions. Sine 66 over 140 would then be equal to sine x over 150 and you'd multiply both sides by 150 so the 150 would appear on the top of the left hand fraction.
and that gets down to what we had already. So there is the calculation that we'll need to do. We have 150 times sine 66. Now, make sure your calculator is working in degree mode. Somewhere on, on your screen you should have a D or a DEG indicating that you're in degree mode. So 150 times sine 66 and we divide that by 140. And that gives us 0 0.978 and so on. Now what does this mean? It means that this angle has a sign whose value is 0 0.978. So we still have one step to do. We have to get rid of the sign. And the opposite of a sign is sine to the minus 1. On your calculator, on this one it's a sign, but on a lot of calculators it's sine to the minus 1, and you'll do a second function, a press sign, something like that. You'll know your own calculator. But um, I have to do this to the number 0 0.978. That's the answer that I've already got there. And so when I say what's the angle whose sine is 0 0.9787, the answer is 78.18. So that means x is equal to 78.18 and so on degrees. So approximately x is 78.2 degrees. I don't think there was an accuracy required in this it doesn't tell you what the accuracy is. So any valid rounding off would be appropriate. So angle X, 78.2. That's the required angle. That's the one between the ground and the shorter leg of the stepladder.